Welcome to the Karis Cures Digital Show and Podcast, where we explore the cutting edge of wellness. Today's episode is sponsored by the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services. I'm Kara Sundlin. So many of us deal with acid reflux. Most doctors might prescribe a protein pump inhibitor or PPI, but there are actually ways to help you heal naturally. And joining us now to talk more about this is naturopathic physician, Dr. Artemis Morris, who says sometimes these drugs can do more harm than good. Welcome, Dr. Morris. Thank you, Kara. Great to be here as usual. Yeah, just how common is it that people would be prescribed a PPI for acid reflux? So in the United States, around 20 to 30 percent of the population is on a proton pump inhibitor like Prilosec or Amiprazole. And the statistics show from a longitudinal study found that two thirds of people who are on them may not need to be on them and it might not be clinically indicated. So there are some things we need to think about before we start taking them. You say sometimes this could cause more harm than good. Yes, and there's been a lot of studies. And one thing that has happened is in terms of gastroenterology, there was a recent study where they have updated the recommendations from the um, gastroenterology center to really take a closer look at when are these medications indicated? And from an integrative standpoint, there are much safer alternatives for mild dyspepsia and some of the things that can cause heartburn. So if you have a severe condition, you know, about one third of the time, you know, talk to your gastroenterologist that, you know, may be the right medication long term, but for most of the population, it can cause more harm than good, especially long term. So the studies are showing the side effects include things like a increased risk of bone fractures up to 44%, according to one study. It also depletes your body of nutrients needed for brain health, for cognitive health. For example, you can't absorb iron as well, calcium, magnesium, even vitamin B12, which can lead to neurological issues. It also has been associated with the increased risk of infection because what does that stomach acid do? It actually is one of the parts of our immune system. And the stomach acid is there to kill bacteria before it hits the gut. So our stomach acid is there for a reason. And so, you know, we have to really consider medically when we really want to suppress it and suppressing it long term can into lead to increased infection. So there were increased infections in hospitals, C. difficile, and nosocomial infections, even increased re risk of death and mortality in hospitals, hospitals when people were on this, including COVID. So we really have a lot to think about um, in terms of prescribing these medications. And there absolutely are things you can do yeah. naturally if you have a mild case. So let's talk about that. Uh, what are some of the natural things you wanna try first? So first of all, you want to think about the basics, like how am I eating? You know, you want to chew your food thoroughly. So, you know, we want to make sure that we are swallowing and chewing thoroughly because if things get stuck in your esophagus, that's um, the tube before it goes to your stomach, that can lead to reflux. So a lot of times it might be that we're eating too quickly, we're not chewing our food well enough, or we're eating the wrong foods for our body. So for some people, too much caffeine, too much chocolate, which I personally love, um, too much alcohol, um, some people, you know, spicy foods. So you want to really look at what foods are bothering you, and that will absolutely help as well, behaviorally not eating too close to bedtime because if you eat, and especially if you're not chewing your food properly, it's gonna just back right back up. Okay. So, um, and yeah, those are some things to start with behaviorally. Yeah, so three hours before you go to sleep, I guess is the a gold standard if you could stop eating before then. Um, and also even simple things, which I think you might be able to find uh, just like they have for babies, where it raises you up a little bit. I know my doctor suggested, um, I had, guess I had some silent reflux going on. He suggested raising the mattress a little bit. So you could put something under your mattress or something that tilts you a little bit. Yes. And, and I think, you know, one thing that we don't think about when we think about reflux is how our posture is, you know, so if you're hunched over, you, know, you want to give your body some 
space in order to function properly as well. So, you know, chewing thoroughly, taking the time, stress will absolutely increase re reflux too. So, you know, think about posturally, behaviorally, whatever you can do to, to help your body, to help itself, you're gonna really benefit from it, especially when we see such really dire side effects um, when the medication is used improperly. So, and if the natural things still aren't enough, if the lifestyle things aren't enough or you need it to happen a little bit faster, you also work with patients to use different supplements, different nutraceuticals that can help uh, when just changing your diet isn't enough. Yes, absolutely. So it's fascinating in the history of medicine, you know, we think about medication, but medication, pharmaceutical medication has only been around for about 200 years. Previous to that, for thousands of years, you know, it was diet, it was lifestyle, it was spiritual spirituality, and it was also herbal medicine. Now, as a naturopathic physician, I studied specifically about nutraceuticals. So these are natural medicines that come from herbs or supplements or some type of naturally derived medication. And in many cases, these can be just as effective as the pharmaceutical drugs without the side effects. So I really appreciate working with gastroenterologists, with you know a medical doctor, osteopathic doctor, so that we can find the best remedy for the patient. So if diet's not enough and there's something going on, absolutely you wanna get assessed by a gastroenterologist to see is it you know, is there something going on that requires medication? And if it doesn't, which again, in most cases, two thirds of cases, it wasn't needed. What we can do is do things like herbal teas. So slippery elm, elm, elm trees are all over, especially Connecticut. So, you know, um, it, you see it as the elm city, right? So this particular tree, uh, the bark has been used by indigenous people for thousands of years to help with reflux, to help with cough. So the same things that you think about, the same herbs, the same substances that would soothe your skin are the same things that you're going to use to internally soothe your GI tract to help with that reflux. So slippery elm, marshmallow root, aloe, aloe vera is very effective and there've been wonderful clinical studies on that. So what do you for do? GI you just, issues. Do you drink the, I mean, I know there's aloe water, there's aloe juice, um, or how do you do these things? <laughs> You know what's kind of fun? I, I'm glad you asked that because we were in Greece for vacation and my uncle has aloe plants and literally my mom had some GI stuff going on. He literally took the aloe, cut it off and, you know, took the juice out and we made a drink out of it. So, you know, I know this is happening, you know, around the world, especially in South America and places where aloe is a really important part of indigenous medicine and has been for, like I said, thousands of years. So you literally can just, as long as you know what you're doing, have the right plant, you can literally just scrape out the aloe and it's very slimy. So be careful. Um, and they do sell it in health food stores and we have it um, on drartemis.com. I do have a drop down for the different companies that you, I use under supplements, but um, it's found in a lot of the combination formulas. So the nutraceuticals I use, Zinc carnosine has also been found very effective. That's more of a nutraceutical. Um, even melatonin. I know we did a wonderful segment on melatonin uh, in the past, Kara. And there's even studies showing that three to up to six milligrams of melatonin was shown to work just as effectively as a miprazole in one study to help with reflux because it helps with calming the GI tract because a lot of our melatonin is actually found in the gut. So there are a number of things. Gum mastic can be effective. Um, you know, there's uh, licorice root, deglycerizinated licorice root, and then there's powders with L-glutamine in it. There, there are many options we have, yeah. and we really want to make sure we find out first what what is the problem. Is it stress? Is it our food? Um, could it be low stomach acid creating the problem? Could it be coming from the gallbladder? There's many different reasons why we can have this symptom. Right. And, and for the average person listening, I mean, I don't want people to get confused as, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to figure all this out. But a little bit of trial and error, you're not going to be harmed by trying to change your diet, you know, maybe for a week. Try to not eat past three hours before you go to bed. Drink licorice root tea. That, that might be the easiest way to get some of these uh, herbs is to just drink the teas. And then if you think you need something more than that, um, you work with patients and you'll work with patients who are already on a PPI and a lot of times naturopathic physicians like yourself will kind of do a, 
a scale back. You don't just stop taking them all of them. You have to work at it because you could have a lot of um, worse reflux from going off too quickly, I guess. You're absolutely right. And I, I appreciate you saying, and I love the way that, you know, you really want to make things practical, Kara. I, I love your show and hopefully everyone else does because, you know, bringing this information out is so helpful. Um, but some of the very basic things you can do, trial and error at home for symptoms, absolutely could be because some people have low stomach acid and that's what's causing the reflux. So a little bit of like um, organic, you know, apple cider or fruit vinegar in water, like one teaspoon. And we have done another segment on that um, before meals. That could help for some people. Um, if it makes it worse, definitely avoid it. And if you have definite high stomach acid and your doctor has found that on endoscopy, that's not going to be the right remedy. Um, but slippery elm tea, marshmallow root tea, uh, licorice root tea, um, DGL. So that's some of the supplements you can see, find. Um, and also, you know, gum mastic. There's some mastic waters that are out there. But if you want to get off your proton pump inhibitor because of these horrible side effects that we're seeing long term, um, and again, if you need to be on it, you know, stay on it, talk to your doctor first about it. But if you want to get off of it, like two thirds of people probably should, um, you want to do it slowly because what the proton pump inhibitor does is it suppresses the stomach acid. And that's why it increases the risk of infection because we need that acid to protect our bodies yeah. from infection. And so what's gonna happen is just think about like pushing the lid down for too long. Once you take that lid off, once you get off those meds, it's going to go up higher because our body wants to find balance. So things could get worse before they get better. So the way I address this with my patients and I have successfully helped thousands of patients get off proton pump inhibitors when it's indicated. And um, the way we do that is we will, you know, either cut the dose and a study actually showed that 15% of people on these medications are on too high of a dose. Um, so we will start by maybe cutting the dose down. I'll work with a gastroenterologist and then Usually what we'll do is do every other day, every two days, every three days. But the key is because many people have tried to get off, it, off these meds and it hasn't worked because the key is to have something natural to take to help you get off of it. Like a slippery elm tea or one of the supplements that we use like lute aloamine or pepsid. So there are many things that we can do to gradually help you get off of it until we can implement those lifestyle changes and find the cause so you won't need anything. That's the goal right. in integrative medicine is to help you, you not need anything eventually. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you mentioned Pepsid, and I know one of our producers here was also working um, to get off of it, and that was one of the transition things. Pepsid is something people know is an over-the-counter drug to help with heartburn and acid reflux, but so that's okay. It's not a PPI. It's something different. Oh, so I might have you know, said it incorrectly, but it's actually Pepsi X. Um, oh, okay. So that's one of the supplements I use that has zinc carnosine in it, not Pepsi. So not Pepsi. Okay. Uh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Because I've yeah, heard of sometimes that people so, put you on Pepsi yeah, it's, and it's, then kind of get you up, like as a step down. And I don't know, I guess. Pepsi. <laughs> so anyway, but you have, right. A lot of people, the thing is, is just going to Whole Foods or a natural supplement store and being like, oh, this says good for stomach acid. This is where you might really want to work with an integrated physician like yourself because um, there is a plan. And just like you wouldn't maybe go to your MD and just start taking prescriptions without knowing what you're doing, there, there's, if you want to be successful at this, um, it really can work. And, and you can also maybe before your doctor says, hey, here's a PPI, you're going to be fine, don't worry. And you're thinking, I don't think I want to be on that. Um, there's other options to get that relief. So you're not, you don't have to live with the burning in your stomach. Right. And those are two really good reasons to see a naturopathic physician or integrated physician, Kara, like you mentioned, it's like, you know, you might have mild symptoms and then the medication, like I said, is overprescribed, has a lot of side effects. You might want an alternative and just to make sure that you're on the right um, supplement. So that's one reason. And, you know, another reason tied into that is because, you know, if you just over the counter try things and you can safely try the slippery elm, the aloe, the um, licorice root, you know, some of these other um, things you can try, mastic. But, you know, we work with other physicians, like a naturopathic doctors, we're the only general practice trained physicians that learn about herbal medicine and nutrition and specialize it throughout medical school. But we work with other 
physicians and specialists. So, so we're not going to take someone off a of medication if they need to be on it. And right. so that's another benefit. You are going to be medically guided and there's going to be a team approach ideally. So to see whether maybe you're one of the one thirds that shouldn't get off of it. So, so there's that benefit too, that we can work with your doc to really safely get off of it. And there's ways to do that safely and effectively. And the great thing, the thing I love about what I do is, you know, people who come to see me or naturopaths or integrative physicians, they end up better than when they started. So we really want to create a new trajectory for better health and not just give you medication to suppress some acid. We want to, what are you doing? Like what is going on with your digestion? Maybe the stress is there. And how do we create a new, better way of life for you so that you live a longer and healthier life? We can still eat chocolate though, can't we? That's what, so that's the goal is to get off of these and get your gut healed so you can eat some chocolate, right? (laughs) I like Uh, that goal. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. I know when the doc, I had some momentary laryngitis, which people don't realize, I didn't realize anyway until they scoped me and they said, you have some acid reflux. I said, I don't have any heartburn. Apparently I had silent reflux, but laryngitis is a sign. So it's overuse and doing what I do for a living. But um, they could see, you know, that there's some redness on the voice box, which they knew was from stomach acid. And fortunately, I had a doctor who uh, didn't advise me being on anything for a very long period of time. He did think it would help me for just a short period of time. What, what if your doctor says, no, you're fine. You can be on this for years. Why are you listening? You, you're fine. Don't worry about this. Yeah. So again, you want to make sure that you're being seen by a gastroenterologist who can do the types of testing to assess whether you're one of the two thirds based on this study that really there's no scientific reason. There's no really evidence for you to be on it or one of the one third that, you know, you might need it long term, even though there are very clear um, side effects, increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, you know, de- increased risk of infection, bone fractures. For some people, like those risks might outweigh the benefits. So, or, or vice versa, the benefits might outweigh weigh the risks. So, you know, I, I think the best thing to do is, like you said too, is if it's if you have a mild symptom, this is what we did for thousands of years when we knew what to eat, when we knew about herbal medicine. And this is why, you know, I became a naturopath to continue um, the knowledge that I can share from a professional standpoint on what herbs to take, what diet to take. So I would definitely try the natural things first and then, you know, get assessed. And if you do have a doctor that's insisting you're on it, you know, it doesn't hurt to still go see, uh, get another opinion or go to a naturopathic doctor or an integrated physician so that you guys, they can work with, um, your other practitioner to see if, if that's really the best thing, because, you know, um, conventionally trained doctors are not trained in herbal medicine or in nutritional supplements. So, you know, they're not going to necessarily know that there's zinc carnosine or aloe vera that has some really great clinical studies showing its effectiveness and that we can work together to get you off of that. Yes, a lot of things to try there and uh, encourage everyone to share this. I know lots of people are on these drugs or they're being prescribed them. So just a little extra information that is definitely on the cutting edge of wellness and some new information we need to think about before we just go on these. So uh, Dr. Artemis Morris, thank you so much for being with us. And of course, people can find you at drartemis.com or even make an appointment to see you at the artemiswellnesscenter.com, both in person or in telemedicine. That's a good thing about naturopathic doctors. Telemedicine works well. A lot of times it's a lot of blood tests that you just go get on your own and then going over your labs and figuring out what you need. So telemedicine can work really well with someone like you, right? Absolutely. And I'm glad to be able to reach more people that way too. So I know there's places of the world where it's hard to get integrative care. So we're here for everyone. Yeah. All right. Well, Dr. Artemis Morris, thank you so much. And I hope uh, if anyone finds this interesting, please share it on your channels with your friends. Uh, Share the podcast. uh, Subscribe. Leave us a review. We always love to know that you're here. It helps support the work that we're doing on the cutting edge of wellness. You can also follow me on social media at Kara Sundlin. I like to share this content there. Have a great day, everyone. Be well.